So in the last couple of videos, we've been talking about the finite quantum well, and we've been setting up the equations that we need to finally solve it, to finally find the energies, the coefficients of the wave function, uh, what the wave function actually looks like, and we came up with a couple of equations. So the first equation looked a whole lot like the equation of a circle. Uh, alpha squared plus k squared is equal to 2m v naught over h bar squared. And the second equation uh, was alpha is equal to, what was it, uh, k times tangent of kl over 2. And these are two equations that involve two unknowns, which means they're in principle solvable. Like you could plug this into a, um, you could plug this into a computer if you knew a value of v naught, m, uh, and l, and you can solve for alpha and k. And from there you could figure out the energy, and from there you could figure out the coefficients. Uh, but that's, while it's doable, uh, it doesn't give a whole lot of insight into how finite quantum wells actually work. So it would be really nice if we had some sort of procedure uh, or some sort of method that was not just strictly numerical that we could kind of just look at and say, oh yeah, that. so as I increase this value, that will happen. And that's why we use here um, graphical methods to solve this because this is these are a set of transcendental equations uh, they can't be solved analytically. They have to be solved either numerically uh, or graphically, which is just a fancy way of saying plot all the numbers at once. And to make this, let's let's try and make this a little more digestible because we've got a k all over two here. We've got k squared. We've got k. Uh, we've got alpha. It would be nice if we could just make everything look the same. So uh, and make everything unitless while we're at it. Um, and so we're going to try to make everything unitless. So k has units of inverse length, alpha has units of inverse length, uh, and we can get rid of that just by multiplying everything by length. So this equation 2, if we multiply everything by l, uh, we'll get alpha l is equal to kl times tangent of kl over 2. Uh, but now, if, if we divide everything by 2, then the equation's even prettier because we have everything in terms of uh, some blankety-blank over 2. So we can make a, make a pretty easy variable substitution. And so if we do that, we just get alpha L over 2 is equal to KL over 2 times tangent of KL over 2. Or if I want to make uh, some really nice substitutions, uh, let's say that y, this unitless variable, is equal to alpha l over 2, and x is equal, let's make it defined as uh, k l over 2, then this equation just becomes y is equal to x times tangent of x. And that's absolutely gorgeous. Like, it's, it's a little ugly in the fact that we're multiplying x by a uh, tr trigonometric equation, but it's so much prettier than the equation that we're dealing with. There's no L's, there's no alphas, it's just plotting variables, y and x. And if we make the same substitutions in the first equation, uh, we'll get that x squared plus y squared is equal to 2ml squared v naught over 4 h bar squared. Uh, and I'm also going to make the substitution that this I'm going to call r naught squared. So we've got x squared plus y squared is equal to r naught squared. So now we've got two beautiful equations. Uh, y is equal to x times tangent of x, and x squared plus y squared is equal to r naught squared. And so let's just plot this. Like, what does this look like? Uh, so if we have y on the y-axis and x on the x-axis, this equation is just the equation of a circle. So it just looks like this, uh, where this distance here is r naught. And so r naught, uh, we, we just defined it above, but basically it's a function of the potential, v naught. It's also a function of the length. So as we increase the potential, we're increasing the radius of the circle. Now what about this equation, y is equal to x tangent of x? Well, it's going to look sort of like the tangent function, in that it's definitely going to asymptote at pi over 2, but it's not going to be quite equal to the tangent function, because it's sort of scaled. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's plot it here. 
uh, and I'm going to draw this equation in green so that we can discriminate between the two. So it'll look like that, and then it'll asymptote again at what value? 3 pi over 2, and so on and so on. So this is sort of what the solutions look like. Not knowing anything about any numbers or alpha and k or anything. Uh, this is what our solution set looks like. So our first equation is just the equation of a circle. Uh, and that's true everywhere, well, on a circle. Uh, our second equation, which is sort of this tangent equation, uh, looks, looks sort of like this. It asymptotes, and I've only drawn it in the first quadrant. And when these two lines intersect, this is where we have solutions. So these points of intersection are solutions to the Schrodinger's equation, or they're, they're the answers that we were looking for. They contain the information about the energy as well as everything else. And you might say, well, Jordan, that's great, but what actually are the energies? Like, I can look at this curve, but it's just in terms of y and x, and we've got all sorts of substitutions going on, and this is just gross. Um, and so, I'll, fair enough, uh, but we can write out what the energy is. Uh, we said that we defined it in terms of k originally, uh, or alpha if you prefer, and so it's just equal to 2me over h bar squared. Um, if you rearrange that and you plug in x, you'll get that it's equal to, what is it? And I'm going to write this in a very suggestive manner. Uh, h bar squared pi squared over 2ml squared times x over pi over 2 squared. And if, you've, uh, if you're very familiar with the infinite quantum well, you'll see that this is nothing but the energy of an infinite quantum well, uh, or the ground state of an infinite quantum well, or E infinity 0. Uh, so it's just equal to E infinity 0 times this other factor, uh, x over pi over 2 squared. And so this just lets us read out directly from the graph, okay, if I solve this somewhat abstract set of equations, just in terms of y and x and r0, uh, and r0 contains most of the physical information about the system, so v0, l, etc. Uh, if you solve that, you, you plot everything, you figure out what x is, so in this case we figured out x was here, for example, then you immediately know the energy. And in particular, you know how the energy relates to the original energy, or the energy of an infinite quantum well. And so we would expect when x is equal to pi over 2, and this is why I wrote it in this suggestive manner, uh, e is just equal to our infinite quantum well potential, or our infinite quantum well energy. And if you plot that on a graph, what does, uh, what does x equal pi over 2 mean? Well, the tangent function asymptotes at pi over 2. So it's x tangent of x, but it still asymptotes at pi over 2. And the circle, in order for x to equal pi over 2, it has to be infinitely large. So the circle has to keep growing and growing uh, as it gets bigger and bigger. It gets closer and closer to intersecting this tangent curve at pi over 2. So as we increase the value of r0, so as r0 approaches infinity, we start to recapture our initial infinite quantum well result. And that's really cool, uh, because r0 was just related to the potential v0. So that's telling us exactly what we expect, that as this potential v0, as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then we get closer and closer to reconstructing the original energy. So our system starts to look more and more like an infinite quantum well. But now, what about when r is really small? So what about when the, the radius of our circle is tiny? So tiny compared to the, to the tangent function, for example. The radius is much smaller than pi over 2, uh, which is our first asymptotic point. Um, well, you see that no matter how small this circle gets, because this tangent function passes through the origin, so as r approaches zero, we still have a point of intersection. So we still have some solution, x, uh, for which we have an energy. But you also notice that, uh, so this tangent function is gonna repeat itself. So pi over two, three pi over two, it's gonna asymptote 
to each of these. Oh, wow, that's ugly. It's going to asymptote to each of these values. But our circle is now only intersecting one of them. Uh, like, the, we only ever have one solution. So as r approaches 0, we only have one energy or one solution to Schrodinger's equation, which means if, we, if our finite potential well is uh, low enough or the barrier is small enough, we might only have one state. We might only have one valid energy, E1. Compare that to the infinite quantum well where we had an infinite number of states, right? The, you could say the energy as a function of n, uh, which was valid for any integer value of n. But here we're saying, well, no, there's actually only one energy for which these equations are solved. And that's really interesting. So the finite quantum well is fundamentally different from the infinite quantum well in that regard. And as the circle starts to get bigger and bigger, at some point there will be uh, an, an energy or a, a potential V naught for which we have a new solution. So as this V naught starts getting bigger and bigger, well, initially we only had an E1, eventually we'll have an E2, and then an E3, and so on and so on. And their values you can get from uh, just by plugging them into the equation that we derived previously. So in the next video, we'll do some examples to make this, uh, this more concrete, including comparing it to the infinite quantum well, uh, because that will turn out to be one of the most useful uh, quantum models in optoelectronics. So it's very important to understand uh, both this and the finite well and how they compare. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments below, uh, just post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.